Alright guys, another casual review. This is exactly how it came in the mail. The other side is my address, so I'm not going to show you that. I didn't even know what this was when I first got it. I forgot to... I didn't think it would come in a box this big. But maybe it's a lot bigger than I thought it would be. <clears throat> yeah, alright. I don't know, of course, what that... I don't know what that text says. Alright, so maybe that was just a ra random, like, box. And now this is the retail box here. So it says portable... <coughs> Portable projector, FHD, UHD, ultra high def, fine. I don't know what FHD is. I'm not uh, an electronics guy so much. This is a very generic box. Is a uh... all right? What's it say here? Start up without ads. No, that's good. So I guess maybe some cheaper ones actually have ads and stuff. Uh, Android. That's nice. And this is supposed to be a white version. So let's see. All right, so you got that nice, really dense foam to keep the thing from getting just bricked from shipping. Then we have the good old instructions, but you know me, I'm gonna try to figure it out without the instructions. My videos are pretty much like, you know, how would an idiot try to work something? And then if I have to, I'll go back and read the instructions. So it does have a remote control. I think I actually have seen this remote control before. Maybe in like on an Android, one of those little Android boxes you hook up to your TV. And so this thing is going to take two AAA batteries. Okay. This is coming in a nice uh, velvety plastic bag. Actually that is around the size I was expecting. Just uh, the box itself is quite large. Power cord here. And so the power adapter. Feels like this might be something wobbling inside there. It is a 24 volt 2.5 amp adapter. Either voltage and it's a round plug. Okay. Kind of wish it was a type C plug, but maybe that can't be. Well, it can be done. Type-C can easily run 2.5 amps. And then this is that, I don't know what official name of this type of a plug is, but it's common on printers and other electronic devices, of course. So I don't think there's a battery in this, then. Yeah, so the unit itself will take a 24 volt and draw 3 amps of power through it. And I'm assuming that white dot means this is the version of S30, not the uh, those more the better ones. It actually has a camera tripod mount, so I guess that's pretty smart. Some sort of quality inspection sticker. And there's a little piece of plastic protecting the lens. This is supposed to be a sealed system inside, so there shouldn't. It's not supposed to get dust behind that lens, according to the. AliExpress advertisement. Uh, we have an HDMI connector here, an auxiliary input, perhaps for a microphone maybe. It, isn't, it says IR here, so infrared sensor of some sort. And then a regular old school USB connector, and then there's the DC for the power. There's a speaker back here. There's a big panel gap here, so I'm not sure if this comes off or not. Or it's just the way it was assembled. I don't think you're supposed to take that off. So it looks like a power button here. I'm just checking. I don't think there's a battery in this. And I'm going to assume this is the focus button. Yeah, as you can see, it'll move quite a bit. Let's try to get that focus locked in. So that's it. Uh, it actually is relatively idiot proof so far, but never underestimate my stupidity. Alright, I had to put it on a tripod because at this distance, it can't focus on the wall being that close. Uh, and so you might ask, what is that distance? Actually, I'm going to just turn it on, you'll see. From the front of the box, it is around 2 feet or 60 centimeters, right around there. So, yeah, as you can see, if uh, 
see the android, right? I'm gonna try to... It just gets worse. So the closest I could get is having this all the way uh, clockwise. But the android still on that wall is pretty grainy. Well, actually, no, it's pretty grainy. So I'm gonna move this thing back now. And uh, let's see what happens here. You'll also see this room, the lights are on. I have all these lights are on here, so it's actually quite a bright projector so far. I bought this because I have to do some presentations in an office environment, so. All right, let's, uh... I think that's pretty good. All right, so now that text looks a lot more legible because it's further away yeah let's get it close again you know maybe it just had to warm up actually that's definitely close and uh, i would say that's actually quite legible so this distance obviously the table you can't see but there's a table in the way so let me hit that you can read that right so right now this distance is Uh, 31 inches or around 80 centimeters somewhere in that ballpark and that was I would say that's the minimum distance you want to have I will say the settings the word settings over there is not so crystal clear This is also just a painted wall. It's not a special projector screen or anything. It's just white paint on a concrete wall <laughs> All right, I'm gonna move it back though just to make it even easier Oh, so yeah, that's an issue the power cord the weight of the power adapter there you know it's just dangling so I might have to zip tie that all right just got some masking tape there holding that on for now so let me get this so we can see a little bit of the projector and the screen as well and it's all out of focus right now so let's do the uh, good old focus rotation oh, yeah that's very good so the knob itself for the focus it's, there's some sort of resistance to it. Not a lot of resistance, but it's nice because it's not too loose that you lose focus easily. You know, it's a really smooth knob. So I like that. That's pretty good. All right, let's check the remote. I put in some batteries. All right, so I guess the remote is working because you can see that... Uh, the thing's working. Let's try settings, see what's going on in there. All right, you can hook it up with Wi-Fi. Yeah, all right, interesting. Got a the MAC address. Adding it. So standard electronic Wi-Fi kind of stuff. Uh, I will hook that up later. All right, I did hook up to my network. Simple, standard Android connection stuff. Sound, uh, all right. By the way, this little input here, this is an audio input, this round one over here, like a head, headphone jack thing. Auto surround sound, system sounds. I'm not actually hearing any sounds from here, although the system sounds is on, well, Oh, it's only at 20%. Let's see what it goes to with 100. Hit the back button. So the back button's up here. It's kind of weird. I'm used to my back button being there. Audio device. I'll put some sort of... I don't even understand what those other two options are. You know what? Hold on. I'm going to back this up even more so you guys can see more. Let's see. Gotta hit focus again. All right, back apps, yeah, Android apps, whatever. Let's see if there's any in there now. Yeah, it's what already comes with a bunch of apps. <laughs> Firefox, that's still around, huh? Okay, whatever, you can figure that out on your own, what you like. 
storage and reset. So it seems like there's actually 16 gigs of storage inside this thing, so you can get a few movies on there, or, or PowerPoint presentations. <laughs> Projection mode, I'm curious what that is. Front or rear? I don't understand what rear would do, let's try it. Oh, I guess maybe if you're, you know, projecting against a glass surface, like say on the front of a store, a storefront, and you want to project through it, that, that would explain why. So that's kind of cool that it'll do all this stuff. Obviously, if you mount the thing to the roof, you'd want to do something like that. Or obviously the roof of a store going through a window, you'd want to mount it rear and upside down. Okay, let's go back to front. So I think that's really neat that it can do that. Not that I'll ever need it, use it myself. <coughs> Alright, screen percentage. Zoom 100. I'm sure there must be a reason why someone would want to do that. Maybe to put it inside of a picture frame or something. It will not go bigger than 100. You can only go down. You cannot go bigger than 100. Okay, so let's back out of that. Keystone. I think that's when the thing is at an angle. So press OK to switch. Ah, see? So the reason why you want to do that is... <laughs> Let me just put this at a weird angle for a moment. All right, then let's see if we can compensate for that strange angle. So that's kind of vertical. I'm pushing upwards, but not nothing's happening. Oh, but this is working. Pushing the down arrow. So, okay. So hopefully you get the idea. You can, you know, set the projector at a strange angle and yet it'll still, you know, kind of become rectangular after you adjust the keystoning. Let me back it out. Yeah, and even though the lower right corner text over there on the right side is it's still legible. It's obviously still a squished, but Ah, when I hit okay, you see that black little marker? So that that changes the Hmm. Yeah. So you can mess with the, each corner and how much you want to drag that corner out. Hmm. I see. Alright, well, you get the idea. But I have no need to keystone anything, so... Let's put that back in front of the, the camera and see... Press menu key to reset. So, where's the menu key? <sighs> Boy. It's not actually... Am I blind? There's set app and help. So there's an icon for menu, which may be this one. Yeah, this one here is menu. Sorry. This is menu right here. It looks kind of like a menu. All right, well, that's cool that you can set it at an angle if you're in a constrained space. Backlight mode. Sorry, my camera's out of focus again. There we go. Day mode or night mode? So night mode, it just went darker, which makes sense because it should be dark. <coughs> the calendar there, you'll have to set that yourself because it's not January 1st right now and it's not 12 o'clock. Let's just quickly go through the rest of the settings and see what's in there. Yeah, I can set the date, time, the language, keyboard. I'm wondering if this. Okay, so you could probably download other keyboards. It's Chinese, English. That's it for now. Search for something, location, and add accounts. Right. All right. Okay. 
let's see if it auto, the Wi-Fi is automatic. Uh, see, so I do have to go into sign in again. Yeah, it is connected. Well, that's weird. Let's back out again. Hmm, strange. The Wi-Fi is connected, yet it's not going to it. Possibly I have to log into my YouTube account. So let me go and do that. I'll pause. Well, it wouldn't let me sign into my Google account. There's only two things you can sign into. One is called Aptoid. I assume that's some sort of Chinese thing. And Google. There's nothing about Apple here, so you're out of luck for Apple users. Well, I'll have to figure this out later. I can't sign into YouTube or Google. Let's try uh, hooking up a drive. Let's see if it just auto-recognizes this, this disk drive here. Uh, there are a bunch of vents here, by the way. You know, you probably shouldn't block those or overheat. It says there's actually a radiator here, and I can feel the heat coming out of there for sure. But here it's sucking in the air, and maybe it sucks in a little through the speaker as well. Uh, hopefully that won't fall off, but let's just uh, put this drive in here. I wonder if I hold this button down, if it'll do anything. Like, I can change it. No, I cannot. Okay. Well, maybe just go to YouTube now. <laughs> My Wi-Fi router is probably 10 feet or 3 meters behind me. Okay, that is a loudspeaker. So, I didn't do anything different, but now it is hooking up to the internet. So, let's look at this 4K video. But I don't think YouTube actually does 4K, right? It says I'm signed out, so that's whatever. I'm looking for a settings button on the remote control. I'm not seeing it. Alright, so that's the volume there, but there's actually a volume up here as well. No. So, I don't know why, but these volume buttons up here are not working, whereas this one did. Skip ads, I'm trying to... Make it skip. Alright, so I have to watch a commercial. Alright, so my phone is now focused on the screen. That's not bad. I'm gonna turn the, the lights off and we'll see how nice it is. Well, that's pretty impressive, uh, but you'll see the, the video is a little choppy. So it's not the strongest Wi-Fi inside of this box. Uh, it's not fast or something, I'm not sure. And then actually I'm going to pose move the camera down. You can see the box is glowing quite a bit because that projector is quite bright. Uh, that's the side. Okay. It doesn't really bother me, but maybe it bothers you. It's kind of a night light. So I gotta say, you can definitely get some big, probably some really big screens. So I'm gonna move this back even further. Hold on. Actually, I'm gonna remove this hard drive. It's not working anyways. Focus. 
There's the projector, and the camera seems to have focused on it on its own. So that's a pretty big screen now. And it's still quite clear. I have it at an angle, so... That's a little bit more perpendicular to the wall now. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. This is uh, a... <laughs> the advancement of, you know, electronics getting cheaper and smaller. Uh, this thing, was, I have no affiliation with AliExpress, but this thing was like only $60 delivered. So it's quite... I bought it because if someone steals it at, at where I present it, uh, I don't really care. You know, if I lose 60 bucks, I can still survive. But yeah, this is really impressive for the price. I gotta say, it's pretty nice. Um, I'm gonna pause, reset, and see if I can get some sort of a USB drive or something. Okay, so this WD drive has a password. Right now we're at the internal storage screen, but if you scroll down on, with the remote control, you'll go to the USB drive. In this case, it's called Device Public 8.2. But if I go to the file, I cannot get into it because it's, a, it's looking for a password, right? So I'm gonna undo this drive. It's probably not a good idea to just undo a drive like that also. This drive has no password. I have this one hooked up to a television at all times. So if I hook it up, now let's go to the screen. Hold on, this thing's gonna fall over, I think. Ah, uh, back out. Now back out again. All right, so we go to local, media center. Yeah, internal storage, no. Public drive 8.2 or whatever. Go to file. Let me disconnect the cable. I'm back out of this app. Must be. See, it's still looking for that USB device, so that, that might be the problem. There's clearly no USB device hooked up right now. Uh, so I'm going to turn the whole thing off and start it up again. So you gotta hit the power button twice on the remote control to turn it off. You could also do it with the power physical button, but I'm not gonna bother. All right, so I'm gonna turn it on again. All right, it's rebooted. I'm gonna hook up this non-protected drive. I can feel, yeah, I can feel the drive spinning in there. All right, let's go to local. Media center. And now it's seeing that drive by default. Yeah, the device name is totally changed. Go to file. Yeah, action movies, baby driver. Takes a little time to access the drive, but it's starting up. There's, there we go. So uh, let's fast forward with the remote. Yeah, okay. I uh, increase the volume. A lot of money. And the good news is, you're about to make a lot of money. I got, I got a job, Doc. Yeah, but why slave away to Okay, so it does work. You just might have to reset the thing if you have a hard drive. Maybe with a USB drive, it won't be an issue. In fact, let me pause and see what happens there. So with the hard drive, I actually turned off the projector. I didn't just yank out the cable. You know, I think that'd probably be the safer way to do it. All right, so I'm gonna just hook up this little YouTube vi review of a, like a Gundam robot I have on this drive. Upside down, I think, yep. Yeah.
Let's see how quickly it recognizes the drive. See, there's like 37 lux on the wall right there. USB is mounted. But it's still not showing up. Hmm. So, yeah, definitely pretty slow processor inside of this box. It mounted the USB, but can I scroll down? No, it's still not seeing that drive. It's funny, it's misspelled as well, internal. Uh, let me back out of the app and go in again. Now it is there, so maybe that's something you want to try to do if it doesn't just show up. Let's just go to file. There's my MP4. Gives you the specs of the file and stuff there, the size of it and all. Okay. What's happening, Gundam Converge fans? Today we have uh, plus zero zero seven. Okay, Indeed. so uh, it rec it definitely loaded it pretty fast. Okay, so I guess the last thing I want to do is try to hook up an actual notebook computer and see about, you know, running some uh, Photoshop or something on this thing. This HDMI cable is working. That's my TV. It's my cable box. And so this cable goes to the TV. You'll see when I pull this out, TV no signal, right? Plug in, TV signal. So this cable works. Let me get this out of the box. So projector is on. Cable goes in HDMI. Goes into the computer. Computer. Windows P. Duplicate. Nothing. Extend. Nothing. So, screen doesn't change, it's not recognizing. Let's try through system. Display. Right, connect to display, there's nothing detect it will not detect it no other display connected so I cannot connect to this hong top projector All right this is just saying Windows P duplicate so now where's this I don't know So I try disconnecting this, I'll connect again. Those are green now. Exit, confirm, or background. Background. This remote control is garbage. Still nothing. No projection.